What's this? A letter for me. Welcome to another episode of Remember the Great Sports Through the Mail Thursdays. Today I'm going to share with you three envelopes that I recently got back. One, however, was an envelope that I sent out and I basically wrote off as never seen again. I sent this out probably a year or two ago and I think with the COVID stuff going on, maybe this person finally got caught up on their mail and I'm very happy to show you who that is, but we're going to save that one for last. So let's jump right into this and the first one is a basketball return and it is from former Utah Jazz slash Milwaukee Buck great Blue Edwards on one one as a Milwaukee Buck even though he's pictured as a Jazz player that was right when he was traded and we'll talk about that in a second three and four on a 92-93 Topps Archives card and with the recent success of uh, Michael Jordan mania, I guess we'll call it, this Topps Archives set has just skyrocketed in, I don't want to say value, but in popularity because a lot of people are discovering some of the older players in the Topps Archives set that never had original Topps cards. And I remember buying these back in the 90s when they came out and they were cheap. I mean, they're like a dollar a pack maybe if that and I have almost a near complete set I, I bought a wax box of them back you know probably for 10 bucks or so back in the day and these are just some of the singles out of the set and I've gotten a few of them signed over the years so enough about Topps Archives let's talk about Blue Webbards and his career in the NBA which was pretty impressive so Blue Edwards, his real name is Theodore Edwards, and I don't know much about how he got his nickname Blue, but we'll just call him Blue from here after, was born in Washington, D.C. on Halloween, which is kind of cool. However, he grew up in North Carolina and attended high school in North Carolina and also attended Eastern Carolina University. Well, he was drafted by the Utah Jazz with the 21st pick, in the 1989 draft. Well, immediately coming to the Jazz, he was slated as their small forward. He is listed as a small forward slash shooting guard because he only stands at six foot four, but he played small forward for the majority of his career. Well, his rookie season with the Jazz, he averaged 8.9 points per game. He was a pretty prolific dunker also in his career. And in 1990, he actually was in the NBA All-Star Game dunk contest. He didn't win it, but he appeared in it. Well, by 1991-92, he was having averaging about 12.6 points per game for the Jazz. However, in the offseason between 92 and 93, he was dealt to the Milwaukee Bucks. Well, with the Milwaukee Bucks, he only got better. He he averaged 16.9 points per game for the Bucks during the 92-93 season, which was his career high. He followed that up the next season, averaging 11.9 points per game, or 11.6 points per game. Well, after the 93-94 season, the Bucks decided to trade Blue to the Boston Celtics. While entering the 94-95 season, he played for the Celtics. However, about midway through the season, he was traded back to the Utah Jazz, where it all began. The Jazz kept him on their roster, but at this point, he was not used as a starter. He was coming off the bench for the Jazz at this point in his career. And after the 94-95 season, he was left unprotected, and he was selected by the Vancouver Grizzlies in the expansion draft for now the modern-day Memphis Grizzlies. Well, with the Vancouver Grizzlies, he got his starting roll back. He averaged 12.7 points per game his first season with the Grizzlies, as a starter, and he is the first person in the history of the Memphis slash Vancouver Grizzlies franchise to record a triple-double. And for those that don't know what a triple-double means, it means that you have 10 or more in a category 
in a single game, meaning 10 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists, 10 block shots, et cetera, et cetera. So he is the first person to have the triple-double for the Vancouver Grizzlies franchise or the Memphis Grizzlies franchise. Well, after spending three seasons with the Grizzlies, he elected free agency and went to the Miami Heat for the 1998-99 season. With the Heat, he primarily only came off the bench and only appeared in 24 games for the Heat that season. Well, after the 98-99 season, he did retire from basketball. So, overall, Edwards played almost an entire decade um, in the NBA for, let's see, five different franchises. He was one of the original Vancouver Grizzlies, which is kind of neat. So I'm very happy to add Mr. Edwards to my collection. All right, so this next one is from former Detroit Piston great slash Charlotte Hornet, original Charlotte Hornet, Kelly Trapuca on one, two, three, and four, all featuring him as a Charlotte Hornet. However, he was a very successful player with the Detroit Pistons, and we're going to talk about that right now. So Kelly Trapuca, a New Jersey native, went to high school in New Jersey, and then later moved on to his collegiate career at Notre Dame. While I was at Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish basketball program made the NCAA tournament all four years that he was there. He led the team in scoring all four seasons that he was there as well. And after his tenure in college, he was drafted in the first round with the 12th overall pick by the Detroit Pistons in 1981. Well, in 1982, his rookie season, or 81-82, excuse me, his rookie season, he averaged 21.6 points per game in his first season in the NBA. Despite these numbers, he did not win the Rookie of the Year award, which is kind of surprising. Well, also in his rookie season, that was one of his first of two All-Star games. Well, his sophomore campaign wasn't even worse, and this is this is the amazing part. This his sophomore year, his second year in the league, he averaged twenty six point five points per game. However, he didn't make the All Star team, which is kind of amazing because the following year he averaged twenty one point three points per game, and he made the All Star team again. So, even though he had his best statistical scoring year, he didn't make the All Star team, but the two seasons before and after he did. Well, he spent a couple more seasons with Detroit, and while playing the position of small forward for Detroit, primarily, he averaged a total of 21.6 points per game playing small forward for the Pistons. Well, after the 1985-86 season, the Utah Jazz decided to trade their aging veteran, Adrian Dantley, who later would become a Hall of Famer, for Kelly Trapuca. Well, Trapuca landed in Utah, and he saw his minutes diminish while he was with Utah, and actually got to the point with his second year there, battling some injuries, that he only appeared in 49 games and only started 21 of them. Being a little disgruntled with his time playing with the Jazz, he was looking for a new location to play, and that is when the Utah Jazz traded him during the offseason to the newly expansioned Charlotte Hornets. Well, when he went to the Hornets, he was the guy again. Appearing in 71 games his first year as the Hornets, he would have the second total highest scoring total in his career, averaging 22.6 points per game for the Charlotte Hornets. He was their go-to guy that first season. Well, going into the 89-90 season, he appeared in 79 games for the Hornets, but only averaged 15.6 points per game. Well, father time caught up, and at age 31, after the 1990-91 season, which I believe is all three of those cards, Trapuca decided to hang it up as he only averaged 5.5 or 7 points a game, excuse me, 
and only started in one of the games for the Hornets that season. Well, post playing career, Tapuka got into uh, broadcasting a little bit for the Knicks. Uh, he moved back to his hometown of New Jersey and broadcasted for the Knicks for a couple seasons. However, he quit doing that circa 2012, I believe. In 2008, he was named to the 50 Greatest Pistons. Trapuka was named the New Jersey Boys Basketball Player of the Century. So, the best New Jersey basketball player of his century, I guess. Trapuka shares the record for most points scored in the first road playoff game with 40. He is one of six Pistons to have scored 40 or more in a playoff game, along with Dave Bing, Isaiah Thomas, Jerry Stackhouse, Chauncey Billups, and Rip Hamilton. So, very happy to get Mr. Trapuka. I have actually written him before in the past. This is a very underrated player that he came out of the gate, you know, as one of the best in the NBA. His time in Detroit was excellent. If you guys have watched any of my NBA 2K videos, you've seen him in the Charlotte Hornets video, but I also have him on the all-time Detroit Pistons, which is also an awesome person to have off the bench. So thank you, Ms. Mr. Trapuka. Very happy to add you to my collection. All right, so this last one, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, took a little while to get back to me. And this was one that I had basically written off because I took a shot at writing this individual, not really sure if he was going to send them back. I had a couple cards, I had a couple index cards, so I just stuck them in an envelope and hoped that he signed them, and the wait was worth it. And who am I talking about? None other than Tom Satch Sanders on one and two then and now upper deck retro cards. And in addition to the two cards, he also signed two index cards and he inscribed one Hall of Fame 2011 and the other one he just wrote Celtics in his number and he also wrote out Tom Satch Sanders on both of the index cards were on the cards he just signed them Satch so I'll zoom up so you can see the cards a little bit better there but yeah he just he just signed the two cards Satch Sanders where he signed the two indexes Tom Satch Sanders so very happy to add Sag Sanders to my autograph collection. I mentioned the NBA 2K20 videos. I also have him on the all-time Celtics, so check that out sometime. Sag Sanders was born in New York, New York, New York City. He attended high school in New York, and then later went on to New York University to play collegiately. He excelled so well at New York University that the Boston Celtics made him their first round pick with the eighth overall pick in the 1960 NBA draft. Well, in 1960, he made an immediate impact with the team, appearing in 68 games. And from then forward, he would be part of the Celtics dynasties. And he would average about, for his career, about 10 points per game and about about six rebounds a game. He played small forward slash power forward. He was kind of the quintessential sixth man, although he did start some games, but he was kind of like the guy off the bench. And the cool thing about Satch Sanders is he is tied with other Boston Celtics greats as having eight NBA championships to his name. Yes, I said eight. So he has one for every finger, okay, not counting his thumb. He can fill his both both hands up with his championship rings. Well, he was elected to the Hall of Fame in 2011, as the index card indicates. And I just showed you my phone there for some reason. I don't know why. After his playing career, he actually uh, wound up coaching a little bit. And he was actually the first African-American coach in the Ivy League when he coached Harvard from 1973 to 1977. Well, I don't know why he left Harvard University as the basketball coach. However, in 1978, he took, took the job on as the Boston Celtics head coach. However, that did not last long because he did not have a really good record with the Celtics as they started the 1978 season with two wins and 12 losses. And then he was replaced with Dave Cowens as 
the player coach of the team. So post-playing career, it also says that in 1986, he founded the Rookie Transition Program, which is the first in any American sport that helps rookies transition into the league, which I think that is very important. You hear about a lot of former NBA players that spend a lot of their money because of getting into you know a lot of wealth very early on when they're young. And I know the program was set up in 86, but obviously some guys didn't uh, pay attention in class there a whole lot because there's some cases of some former NBA players that uh, lost all their money. Finally, his number 16 is retired by the Boston Celtics, so it's hanging in the rafters. And again, it's just amazing that this individual won so many championships. So I want to thank Mr. Sanders for signing my cards. I also want to thank Mr. Edwards as well for signing. Kind of got a glare there. I don't want to blind you guys. And I also want to thank Mr. Chupuka as well for signing my card. So thank you very much. So I want to thank you for watching another episode of Through the Mail Thursdays. I look forward to your comments below. Thanks.